Oh, it's you again. How very nice of you to return. I suppose this means you're interested in another story. Well, of course I do have another, but I must warn you, it is not a happy story. No, it is indeed quite a miserable tale. The following unfortunate events happened very sadly to the Able sisters. The Able Sisters. I'd be shocked if you'd said you hadn't met at least two of them, but there are indeed three. The oldest being Sable, born on November 22nd, the middle, Label, born October 31st, and the youngest, Mabel, born May 22nd. We of course don't ask for the year because it's incredibly rude to ask a lady for their age. What we do know is there are ten years between Sable and Mabel, quite a considerable age gap. They grew up in a small country town. The tailor shop you have most likely seen them running was once owned by their parents. Their parents were loving to them all. They insisted on family camping trips when Sable and Label were small. Their father would leave their bedroom door open at night so that they felt safe, and their mother would join them in bed and wish their claws be kind. A saying meaning that even when work was hard, they were special and filled with love. Their father also made sure they knew that even though his daughters are beautiful, their beauty on the inside was what mattered, and that the quickest route to getting something done was to just do it. I could maybe use those mantras in my own life. The eldest sister, Sable, had developed a rather close friendship with Tom Nook this island's manager. If you were here for my previous tale, you may remember me saying I believed it to be a little more than friendship, but I digress. The two were rather inseparable, climbing on rooftops to make constellations, spending most of their days together and sharing their dreams. Tom's being he wanted to own the biggest shop in the world, and Sable's being she wanted to sell the cutest clothes ever in the town. Sable considered Tom an older brother figure in her life. Label, on the other hand, was busy dating a horse in school and was growing restless with country life. It is hard to say if the three were close when they were younger as they were apparently always getting into trouble with their parents. But unfortunately, tragedy struck. One day, a fatal accident occurred, meaning the business was left to Sable. The responsibility of the business was not all that was left to the oldest able child. She was also left with the responsibility of raising her two younger siblings while still being a young hedgehog herself. The youngest, Mabel, was too young to remember her parents or understand what was happening, which as cruel as life is, possibly this was the best outcome for her, as she seems to be the least affected by the loss. I suppose it is hard to be upset at a loss that you don't remember losing. The only memories Mabel has of her parents are of the photographs that they keep at the back of the shop behind Sable's sewing machine. After her parents' passing, Sable clung to her friendship with Tom, it being the relationship she valued most and him being the one who was there for her through all her hardships, especially when the next tragedy occurred. Shortly after their parents' passing, Label and Sable had a huge argument. Now it's not unusual for the three to bicker, but this was different. Label, who was closer to Sable's age, wanted to pursue her dreams, but Sable never wanted her to go. This argument with her sister led to her leaving, not just the house, but completely moving away from their hometown. Through rumours, both Sable and Tom found out that Label had gone to the city in hopes of pursuing her dreams of being a fashion designer, but Sable didn't hear from her again. Sable took over the tailor shop to help keep her and her youngest sister afloat. The first thing that she learnt to make was a pair of gloves for Mabel when one winter she caught frostbite. However, the gloves were misshapen as it was her first try and Mabel ended up wearing them on her ears instead. Over the years, Sable improved her tailoring skills. As you can see, I'm sporting some of her wares right now. Unfortunately for Sable, before long, she encountered yet another loss. After a while, Tom had decided that the small town life just wasn't for him, and he needed to pursue his dreams in the big city. Sable's only friend was about to leave her, possibly for good. And it wasn't that Sable didn't want to go, no, in fact she wanted to join him, but her responsibilities of looking after Mabel and the shop tied her to life in their hometown. And although Tom cared for her, he couldn't put his dreams on hold for her, so off he went. Sable would wish for Tom every night that his pure spirit would be protected and for his safety. Eventually she heard from him through letters and their their correspondence kept up quite regularly, and she even received a birthday present from him despite him being short on money. The scissors she received from Tom are believed to be the same scissors she uses today. In the meantime, Label had indeed made her way to the city and had even managed to get a job with top fashion designer Gracie Grace. However, to dispel her country ways, she changed her name to Labelle and even tried to get rid of her accent. The years went by. Mabel grew up and decided she wanted to help her sister with the shop. She too hadn't had contact with Label and for the most part didn't remember her. Eventually, Eventually, Mabel became the clerk under the condition that Sable wouldn't bring up things they didn't have anymore. Most likely, she only did this due to her guilt of not being able to give Mabel much growing up. 
Tom eventually returned to the country. Despite Sable being glad he had returned, she couldn't help but feel sorry that his dreams had not worked out for him. He opened his shop near hers, and she attempted to be there for him during this hard time the same way he had done for her. But Tom had changed, and was not the person Sable once knew. One day, Sable was trying to reassure Tom about his dreams, and he shouted at her, Dreams are nothing in the face of money. That moment changed everything. Sable withdrew from Tom, understanding that her old friend was nothing more than somebody she used to know. Unfortunately, this made Sable start to have a disliking for those who went or even came from the city, noticing those who weren't from the country and began having a prejudice against them. They couldn't be trusted, she would say. Mabel called it her city folk complex. This even included Blathers, but this did change one day when Blathers came running into their shop terrified of a bug and in his panic started shopping for women's clothing. Well, the Abel sisters aren't ones to judge on people's clothing preferences, but Sable did think she should say something. When Blathers came again and was once again looking at women's clothing, both sisters realised he actually had a little sister and was shopping for her. So Mabel and Sable helped pick out one of the biggest ribbons for her. The encounter helped Sable. She even started trying to help Tom again by making him clothes for the colder months so he wouldn't get sick. However, he felt he didn't deserve them until his shop started making more money. So she made him clothes to congratulate him whenever the shop expanded as a compromise. Mabel unfortunately did not have the pleasure of knowing how Tom used to be and so struggled with his attitude getting angry when he wouldn't say hello when she'd see him outside the shop, or wondering what his deal with money was. Time went by and eventually Mabel began receiving letters from somebody in the city. At first she didn't tell Sable, but Sable noticed the change in her sister's behaviour. She suddenly seemed tired and down instead of her usual happy self. Tom had discovered that Label was working in Gracie Graves when he was in the city and wondered if the others knew, but felt it wasn't his place to get involved. Label was the one who had been sending letters to Mabel as an attempt to reconnect. She kept sending Mabel money, but Mabel always tried to refuse because of Label's own financial circumstances. But Label didn't give up because of her own guilt. She couldn't handle not speaking to her sisters anymore. Mabel decided she wanted to reconcile and told Sable about the letters. Although Sable was no longer angry with Label, she couldn't just leave the shop. The same reasoning that held her back from leaving with Tom all those years ago. But Sable had accepted what happened and thought everything had worked out for the best. Mabel, on the other hand, was determined to get her siblings speaking once more. And she was successful in her attempt. Label eventually moved back home to work in the tailor shop to run the accessories section. She still went by the name LaBelle to show that she was a fashion designer in her own right and not just an Abel sister. The three sisters were united once more, but Label once again was restless in one spot. She couldn't help it. It's her nature. Sable began to worry that Mabel would leave like Label did, but Mabel doesn't seem to be going anywhere anytime soon. She enjoys working with her sister too much. When Tom started his getaway package, Mabel was eager to join him on this venture, wanting to open a shop on the island. Sable agreed and seemed to be happy with the idea. Label, on the other hand, took this opportunity to once again pursue her fashion designing dreams. She wanted to travel and look at fashion from all over the world to study it. Although Sable wasn't too happy with the idea, she accepted that this is just how her sister is, and for the first time, let her go. You may have noticed that Label does stop by from time to time to see her sisters and study the island's fashion choices. I have a suspicion it is mostly for the former. She also now goes by label again, and only uses LaBelle for her own designs. And that's their story up until now. It's not the happiest tale, but I believe the ending is far happier than the beginning. Sable seems happy working with Mabel, and Label can still pursue her dreams, but they will always be sisters, and won't ever let anything come between them again. I also think Sable's relationship with Tom has improved now that he seems to be a lot happier, and even Mabel seems to be more of a fan of him. I hope this tale didn't upset you too much. I did warn you. Maybe the next tale will be a slightly happier one if you care to join me again. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Bye!